you can use HTML. The, 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 the win when you're using GWT is not uh, initial speed. There's a lot of there's a lot to get it started, but once you do, you have this is mainly for like enterprise applications. It's not if you want to make a very small application like this, you wouldn't really use GWT. But I have, I have no other way to explain it to you guys than creating a small application. But but if you have a medium sized application, there are many there are many issues that you'll run into that you won't run into if you're using the Yes? Yeah, so there's actually, there's frameworks again, and this is some of the benefits is that there's a lot of frameworks that allow you to do really cool things. Like you can, you can make, you can have the exact same code that works on a mobile app and on a desktop app with you. And all you have to do is like uh, change the view a little bit, but it's the exact same like uh, presentation logic and all that. So it can run locally on my mobile without having any server or any extension plugins, right? Yeah, well, it, it's a pure web technology. Your HTML5 and then JavaScript. So it'll work just fine for mobile device. Would that work uh, with uh, the HP by using cascading style sheets? So the CS, so cascading style sheets is is how you manipulate the the, 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 the style of the UI, and there's support for CSS, obviously. So the XML you saw, you can style each individual element the way you like. To. Okay, so if you want to use the, the G-Chart API, there's one line of code that you need to add. So it's, it's this right here. And this is what you're gonna add to, there's a, there's a module XML file. And I'll, I'll do that. So, let me grab, I have a little sheet here. So this line of code right here needs, needs to be added to the, the application's XML file. This is what tells the application which Java, which what Java code you want to translate to JavaScript. So I just added that line. Uh, and again, in the notes that I'll post, you, you can see all of this stuff. So now it's now I'm telling the application I want to import this this API. It's telling it's telling the, the Wood compiler this is where it is, and now I can use it. So the other thing I need to do is add it to my class path. So I go here to the Java build path. I add a jar, and this will be familiar with any, to, to those people that use Eclipse. Anytime using jar, you have to add it to your class path. Okay, so now I should be all set to use it. And um, let me copy the code that I wrote earlier, and then I'll just explain. So this is the Gchart API. This is going to be useful for you if you're using Python or any of that stuff. So this is the Java version of the of the, of the API. So in the view, instead of uh, alerting the user with the two-string <coughs> version of the map, I'm going to I'm going to call a local method. So let me let me go through this code briefly. Um, you set up like an options object. This is this tells the, the the API what you want the title to be, how big do you want it to be, whether you want it to be 3D, and then you create a data table. Let me change all of these for the company. Um, so you say here's a data table with two columns. The first column is a string, the second column is a number. Uh, and then I want to go through and populate that table. So for each for each of the entries in the map, I add a row to the table. I set the value of the column to the the name of the fruit, and I set the, the value of the fruit to like the actual number of, of fruit there are. And then I just say new pie chart, and then I take that pie chart and I add it to the chart panel. So in the on success method, 
what should I call? Show. Show results. I think the sizes, the, the, the size of the panel might not be the same size as the, as the chart, so it might get chopped off a little bit. I hope this works. I need internet for this. I don't know if internet is working. Like it should be. chart got chopped off, but you get the idea. So the reason I needed the internet, obviously, was because I'm calling a, a, a Google API server to generate the chart for me. So this is a very a very nice API, actually. I don't know, there's another API talk. I don't know if they're going to talk about the Gchart one in particular. Uh, there you go. So um, we have about 15 minutes. Um, we probably don't have enough time to go into the database stuff. So if you guys have any questions, and if there's not a, if there's not a lot of questions I can, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and do the database stuff. Yes? What about unit testing? Can you test uh, Yeah. So um, the best way to do unit testing for GWT is to try as much as possible, just like with MVC or any other pattern, you want to separate the presentation logic from the, from the view logic. So in this case, I didn't do that because I, I made the RPC in the same place that I have the UI. And that's not a good style, but it's just for the demo. But in general, what you want to do is you want to, you want to keep your presenter logic in one class and then just like inject the view and then manipulate the view and then just <coughs> test that out. So usually the view will actually be behind like a, an interface. And when you do the unit testing, you don't have to pull in any of the view at all. That's a very good Yes, yeah, so the title of the page is in the HTML file. I want to change it, for example, if I click Apple, I want the label to be presented Apple G. Oh, the... Yes, from... Can I have a project called Google Pilot? So are you talking about the HTML title? Yes, or... I, I think there should be an API for that. Also, I want to present the script, the type script, Yes, yes. Yeah, there's, there's something called a JavaScript native interface called JSNI. Yes. And you can run any any existing JavaScript you have, you can run it through. Uh, and you can also call back. So that JavaScript can actually interact with your code application as well. Yeah, so you can add the script tag here. And you can I believe there is a way to control the title. Really? Well, let, let, let's look at that. <coughs> I'll be at a demo part. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a good I saw the source. I tried to in the Yeah. What if you have from this app offline? Okay. That will be. What if, what's our, what if you have from this app offline? If your work is, is not, it will allow to be comfortable. Well, in this case, I mean, you're, we're, we're, we're depending on an API that, that we don't own. So if you want to do that, you can like mock out that API or do something. But in this case, of the, of my part was to just get this uh, the plugin that can tell me that it has an image that is all part of the same Like, I'm going to sit down with something else in the back, so I should Google, like, should, to get the graph and get out of the graph and get it and get it myself and save it. Also, yeah. you can do the same. Like, you have to have the option of right, getting the graph outside of the graph. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're going to need to find another option. 
HRD test specifically, I don't think they're, they're gonna, you're gonna be out of luck. saying if you have an existing SQL backend, you can integrate it. So there's there's something called Gilead or Hibernate for good that'll let you take like the model objects that you have in Hibernate and pass them up to the front end. But in this case we'll use something called Objectify. Objectify something that you need to we talked about serialization before. If you want to pass anything between the client and the server it has to implement it serializable and it has to have this private you no know, argument constructor. This is common for these uh, frameworks because they use reflection and some advanced stuff. So let me create this object, and then on the server side, um, we don't need to look at the slides, I can just write the code for you. Um, so, so the first thing I need to do is I need to create the, the entity. So I'm going to create this entity in the shared package, because the client is gonna construct the vote object, and it's going to pass the vote object to the server. Let me go here and create a class called vote. It needs to implement is serializable. It needs to have an ID. So the ID of the class, you just annotate with the at ID annotation. It's a well-established standard. So the, a vote class is very simple. All it is is an ID, and it's like the, the, 
choice that the user made, which is the company. So if I construct this class, it's going to take a company object and it's going to save it. Okay, so this is a very basic class. The last thing I need is a no argument private constructor. This is uh, required. So does this make sense to everybody? It's pretty pretty basic and standard. So now instead of passing the company to the server side, I'm going to pass a vote object. So I, what do I need to change? Like I need to change the services, right? So instead of like passing a company enum, I'll pass the so instead of company here, I'm going to pass both. Copy and paste the code and then explain it. Okay, the other thing I need to do is I need to include the jar. So I'm relying on this. So I have the jars open here. I have to add it to the war directory. So here in the library package, I'm going to add the objectify jar. And I'm also going to have to add it to the class path.
So once I have uh, once I have this working, I think there was a question about uh, about launching and deploying it. So when I'm done with this application, um, there's there's a there's a button on the plugin that allows me to just like publish it to Google, and I'll show you that. Okay, great. It, it's working. So this is like using like a simulated uh, app engine backend. So it actually has like an instance of Je Objectify running. So now that I'm done with the app, the last thing I need to do is go back to this G icon, and there's an option here for deploy to app engine. So if you go here, there's a link here for app engine project settings, and you give it an ID. Um, I, I made one earlier called KSA Quit. Okay, I can, I'll show you. There's a, there's a, you go to appspot.com and you, you register with Google to create uh, an app engine account. And once you have an app engine account, you just go and create an application ID. And then I just, I created this one earlier. Appspot.com. And if you want more information about app engine, you can come talk to me. It's, it's amazing. It's really amazing. You can do like version control and um, you can launch different applications, you can try out different applications. And when you launch an application, it gets replicated around the world. So users get like the closest version of your application to them, right? So if you if you have a server here running in Saudi and I'm in the US, if I hit your server, then it's gonna be slow, there's gonna be lots of lag. But if you launch it on Google App Engine, it gets replicated all over Google servers. So like Google here is very fast, just like it's fast in the US. If Google was just in the US, it would be much slower. So that's one big benefit to using that. It's also like Amazon has been built with, and there's a lot of cool cloud stores out there. So now I can deploy this. The internet here is kind of slow, so this is going to take a while. But if you go to, I did it earlier. If you go to KSA with the appspot.com, you can see the app run. Appspot.com is the, the domain for app engine applications. If you want to host your own domain, you can obviously do that. Okay, are there any questions? Great. Thank you so much.